king of the fake tan and student icon David Dickinson talks to Patrick Keelty tonight at 10.35 here on BBC One. I think it's all over with Gary and Rory is one of the few England cricketers who came out of the recent series against Australia with his reputation enhanced. He didn't go. <laughs> Dominic Cork. <laughs> with David and Jonathan is the world's free diving record holder who can hold her breath longer than anyone else on earth apart from Ali McCoist in a wardrobe. <laughs> Tanya Streeter. Open the show with Sporting Bluff, Gary, Rory and Dominic. Your question concerns England's nemesis, Australian bowler Glenn McGrath. Remember this, Dominic? Another one. A real nothing stroke from Dominic Cork. And an everything morning for Australia. Now, Glenn McGrath's superhuman efforts this winter weren't restricted to the cricket field. After the recent third Ashes test, what else did McGrath do? Glenn McGrath rescued Richie Benno when he got into difficulty swimming. Glenn McGrath helped put out a bushfire at his captain, Steve Waugh's house. Glenn McGrath helped deliver Shane Warne's baby. OK, so Gary's team, did Glenn McGrath save Richie Benno from drowning, put out Steve Waugh's bushfire, or deliver Shane Warne's baby? <laughs> Lads, we've got to be very careful. There's a lot is riding on this game tonight. Um, Michael Owen has 50 grand on us to win tonight. <laughs> <laughs> David got very excited because during that clip somebody shouted, Cork's out! He said, oh, Shampa, stop it. <laughs> Three balls before, he'd, uh, I'd had a little word with him now. I just asked him who'd released his chains off his ankles and perhaps just wound him up. The next ball hit him in the head. <laughs> And then, obviously, you saw him get me out then and had a few words. What, 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 what words did he have with you? Um, I think it was something like, uh, you'll have to go off the field, you English pommy git. <laughs> something like uh, that. Early yeah. on, you said, f*** off, you pommy git, is what he said. Yeah, something like that. That's better, yeah. Dominic, why do you want to motivate him like, to knock your head off? Are you sick? <laughs> He's not a footballer, he's not a footballer, Gary, he's a cricketer. Yeah. <laughs> Great to have you back, David, by the Thank way. Yes. Because everyone thinks David's been commentating on cricket in Australia, but in fact, can we tell them the truth? David Stanisterliff jammed halfway up. <laughs> he was alone in the house, two weeks. He would have died, but he drank his own urine and had a bag of mint imperials. <laughs> Dominic, is it, is it true you support Stoke City like this? Absolutely, of course you we do. Well, yeah. I'm so excited because I've always wanted to meet the other one. And it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> 17,000 at the Britannia Stadium on Saturday. Absolutely, and we were two of them, weren't we? We're 16,000 Derby fans. You play for Derbyshire, don't you? I do play for Derbyshire. You hate Derby County? Yeah, ish, yeah. You get much, I uh, still live there, Rory, so I want to go back to a house. Whereabouts exactly? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Dominic, you really hate Derby County? Yeah, I, do, I hate Derby County. Because yeah. I'm looking for a house in Michelover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, what, was, what did you say, David? Nothing. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> what a silly, what David a silly question. David must have spoken about 1999. <laughs> oh, we've missed what was it? Bush. Bush. Bush fire. Uh, I think a bush is the only chance England have got of getting anywhere near any ashes. <laughs> <laughs> The answer is he uh, put out Steve uh, Wall's fire. So you think that Dave was telling the truth? Let's Correct. see if you're right. Yeah. 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 Well done. Oh. Yeah. David had the correct answer. Steve Waugh heard the bushfire was approaching his home, so he rang McGrath, who immediately rushed around with a bucket to find that the flames were just 20 yards from Waugh's property. When McGrath arrived, there was a plume of smoke completely obscuring Waugh's house, and behind Phil Tufnell was the bushfire. <laughs> Luckily, McGrath had nothing else to do that day. It was the third day of the test match. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Tanya, it's Manchester United for you, or more particularly, those people who describe themselves as United supporters. Oh, that's fantastic by David Beckham. 
final score at Old Trafford of Manchester United 4, Portsmouth 1. Now, what can you tell us about Man United season ticket holders, Gary's team, Dominic? 1,800 of Manchester United season ticket holders are Norwegians. 1,800 of Manchester United season ticket holders are convicted criminals. 1,800 of Manchester United season ticket holders are dead. So, are 1,800... <laughs> <laughs> So are 1,800 of United season ticket holders yes. Norwegians, oh convicted criminals, or dead, David's team? Nick, before we start on that... Here we go. Well, <laughs> I just wanted to apologise if I seem a little tired this evening. It's just I was very busy yesterday. I was auditioning for the presenter's role in Stars in the Eyes. <laughs> now, if Matthew Kelly is watching, we, you know, we wish him well. I hope that there's no truth in that at all, of course, because imagine if he does go to jail that first night. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be your wife. <laughs> Can I do that again? Tonight, Matthew, you're going to be my wife. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, I have been in high-level uh, talks with Greg Dyke about how the BBC can win back the big Saturday night viewers from ITV, and we've just decided to carry on tipping off the police. Because we get... <laughs> Tanya, may I welcome you to the show, probably? I believe you went to a very posh school. I did, I did. You know, it's so nice to have can a well-bred young lady on the show. Uh, can you pronounce the name of her school, though? Rodine. <laughs> no, he can't. No, I said, can you pronounce the name of her school? <laughs> Ruh, ru. Well, keep ru. doing that, I like that. Go on. <laughs> I'm so very nearly there. <laughs> you see, already she's gagging for it. <laughs> for once, I'm not making the first move. <laughs> So free diving involves what? What is this sport? Exactly? Breath hold. You, you hold your breath. <laughs> this is flirting that's going on. It is. It's quite a fun being in the middle, actually. The terrible <laughs> thing is... Can oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but really... you do that, you spit so far, you don't even do that. I cannot <laughs> He's pressing all the white buttons, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but really, what you do essentially is just sinking, isn't it? I believe the world Thank record you. is still held I by Robert Maxwell. <laughs> and he's got to surface one of these days, hasn't he? <laughs> what's that other thing you do? Static, uh, static apnea? Static apnea. Now, what's that? Oh, good Lord. It's breath hold just face down in a pool, just for as long as you can do it. Well, if no. Barry Moore's lawyers oh. are watching... <laughs> well, you might as well. They tried every other excuse. <laughs> Well, come back to us. Danger, danger. Plug in the bottom of the pool, he's trying out for the Olympics. She says, she oh, says that breath, head down in the pool, and you think, I know where he's going. <laughs> what was the question, Nicholas? I remember there was a question some time ago. It's about a Manchester United season ticket holders. Did you read in the paper that apparently last year 20 babies have been named Romeo now? And Chardonnay, that's a very popular name now, as a result of that footballer's wives thing. And I don't know if this is true, but apparently the character's called Chardonnay because that was the drink her mother was drinking when she was conceived. Which reminds me, Roy, how's little baby Roe Hypnol coming along? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, she's a, she's a very good sleeper. <laughs> 1800. Dead Norwegian. Or what was the other one? Oh, dead Norwegian criminals. criminals. It could be all three. Mm. It could be dead Norwegian. <laughs> I would have thought dead. Yeah. I'll tell you for why. Should we make it? No, I'll tell you for why, because you can do that. That's how I can keep claiming Social Security. <laughs> so, you think that Rory was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yes, Rory had it right. Manchester United recently made the strange discovery that 1,800 of their season ticket holders have pegged it. Their families had kept the fact hidden for fear of losing valuable seats. Manchester United took immediate action by mass-producing a special Man United coffin <laughs> at just £1,999. <laughs> West Ham have a similar number of dead season ticket holders, although, to be fair, they're mostly suicides. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have three points, and Gary's team have three points. I don't know, I think so. OK, time to figure out what's going on. Gary's team, here is yours.
So what was happening there, Gary's team? Is that a Jonathan's family get-together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Stoke City. It certainly is. The Britannia nice. Stadium, yeah. Do the Stoke fans dress up like that every time they win a game? Because I saw 1976 up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know Stoke, but um, it consists of a number of sort of uh, conurbations. There's Stoke, Burslem, Longton, Tunstall, Fenton and... Hanley. Han Hanley. Hanley. Very yeah. good, yeah. In fact, there was a, Arnold Bennett wrote um, a famous novel called Anne of the Five Shitholes. Based on Stoke. That's, That's right. It's <laughs> <laughs> the only ground in the country where the announcer says, would the person with the car stop showing off? <laughs> <laughs> so can you do an Elvis impression? Then? No, Probably. certainly can't. The only one I do is Vindaloo, and that was last Saturday, completely out of my face on Budweiser. <laughs> one of our top cricketers, yeah. ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before those ashes come back. <laughs> This looks like, uh, given the date and the time, it must have been the 25th anniversary of the death of Elvis. And some Stoke City supporters, for some unknown reason, perhaps they've got a great sense of humour, as well as a great football team, decided to dress up as Elvis. It's a correct answer for three points. Well done. <laughs> yep. That was a group of Stoke City fans parading at the home of football, the Britannia Stadium, as part of their tradition of dressing up as famous people. One of those Stoke fans, dressed as Elvis, competed in the annual mascot race, where he was beaten by a pantomime horse, or Emil Heskey, as he sometimes <laughs> named. Dominic here is, as we've heard, a Stoke City fan, which explains the three bonus points I'm going to give to his team. Well done, Dominic. That's three extra points for you. Well deserved. The England cricket team also have a tradition of dressing up at their annual Christmas fancy dress party. One year, David Gower went as Miss Marple. It was such a hit, he's worn the costume ever since. <laughs> so, David's team, take a look at this. So what David's team was going on there? Someone's, some... been, someone's been weeing in the pool, I think. <laughs> <laughs> was it Jacques Cousteau's paper boy? <laughs> I like that! Do you think that's someone from one of those triathletes and they've forgotten they meant to ride the bike on land and swim? <laughs> they must be strong. Don't you think they must be strong? Who'd... what, me? It's a very simple what? question, David. <laughs> Just not. Alzheimer's can be a terrible thing. <laughs> Still got all his own, well, most of his own hair, some of his teeth, and one of his testicles. <laughs> Where did you put the other one? I think Michael Owen won it in a bet. Right. <laughs> I think it's, I'm gonna hazard this, the Underwater the... Cycling Championship, the what? British Underwater Cycling mm -hmm. Champion, All England, the, the All England European Underwater world, Cycling Champion, the, the, the European we'll give you the three world. points for that. Thank you. That was another underwater world record by Germany's Wolfgang Kulo, who set a time of three hours, 15 minutes, cycling two and a half miles along the seabed. It is a genuine world record on the basis that no one else has ever been bothered to try it before. <laughs> so, film of a rubber-clad German pumping away for two hours on an old bike. How disappointed was Rory when he got that home from Blockbusters? <laughs> Marine scientists especially adapted that bicycle to make sure it didn't rise to the surface. The process involved attaching a stupid German to it. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have nine. Time to seek explanations for a pair of gold celebrations, Gary's team. It's the trademark celebration of Fulham's Argentine striker, Facundo Sava. Good play by Mount Brandt, and a lovely switch, and Sava, Basson got a touch, but Fulham lead with ten minutes gone. <laughs> Here he goes again, but it was Birmingham who were unmasked. Now, that was Sava scoring in the recent cup win against Birmingham, so what's the story behind that, Gary's team? Gary, you've scored a few goals, what was your celebration? Um, I used to just go... Well, when, I, when I was sweating, I used to go... <laughs> 
<laughs> so you always went like that then? <laughs> What about you, uh, Corky? What how do, do you, I celebrate? How do you celebrate? Telling the batsman to go forth and multiply and give him a point off the pitch and then giving my, the match referee 50% of my match fee. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why David Graham has cut off your mobile phone? I <laughs> 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 always got a call saying sim error on my mobile phone. When it came out of the gym, I rang the ECB and they said, uh, you're no longer an England player. So really? that was it. And that's where you find out they cut your mobile phone off? Yeah, not even a text message, so thanks England. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know cricket, do you? I play rounders sometimes. What? I play rounders. Cricket's Good game. Glorified. It's a hard game, rounders. It's, it's a tough game, rounders. Jonathan, you've got a you... whack. Never mind cricket, just up and down. You've got to remember four places to run in rounders. <laughs> it's hard. That's why it's harder than cricket. You couldn't last in a rounders field. Look at you. Couple of. Look, your hair all tinted like a Nancy boy. And you're <laughs> you're, you're, I tell you, rounders, that's a man's game. <laughs> In my spare time, I happen to be the coach of the Rodine Rounders team. It's kind of an unofficial position at the moment, and I've got a restraining order, but as soon as I get... So anyway, this mask business, Sabah. And it, I was something to do, at his previous club, he got the nickname of a wolfman, or self-styled himself wolfman. This is suspicious, Nicola. It is a bit, isn't it? And he wore that mask as it's the mask of Zorro, not understanding that Zorro is in fact Spanish for fox, a, a fox and not a wolf. I'm not going to give you that, no. Contrary to reports, it has nothing at all to do with Zorro. The team he played for in Argentina were nicknamed the Wolves, and after he scored, one of the fans threw him a Wolfman mask. Man, after that, the fans started sending him different masks, which he keeps in his sock and puts on every time he scores. Facundo Sava isn't the only sportsman to keep a surprise tucked into his sock. <laughs> Linford Christie used to have one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Football does have a history of players wearing masks. There was Paul Gascoigne's protective mask, Trevor Sinclair's recent effort, and here's the grotesque gargoyle mask worn by Luke Chadwick. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, sorry, that's his face. <laughs> David's team, it's one of two non-league teams through to the FA Cup fourth round, Dagenham and Redbridge for you. Second chance for McGrath to get a decent ball in, and he does! And Paul Terry, 13th minute, unlucky for Plymouth. Dagenham take the lead. And a special celebration ensues, and you tell me what all this is about. So that was Paul Terry, brother of Chelsea's John, scoring for Dagenham and Redbridge against Plymouth in the last round. But what was that celebration all about, David's team? I read, Tanya, <laughs> my little petty shoot. I read once you said, because of the diving, I imagine, that you wanted to know what it was like to be a fish. Is this correct? Um... You can't believe everything you read, perhaps. Is you, this going somewhere? No, it's just I'm warning you now that when I told Roy this, he said he was going to cover you with battle after the show. Now, <laughs> you want to watch it. <laughs> Dominic's looking at me with a mixture of pity and fear. <laughs> He's not on his own there. <laughs> now I know I John think... Leslie feels on a date. <laughs> They've got a metal detector, they're looking for something. Cars, they're got looking cars. for an old car that's been buried. Cause for, they're... Ford, for a Ford Anglia from 1973. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, do you? A metal football that was used you in primitive times. You don't know, do you? <laughs> Any ideas over here? I think it's um, a jokey tribute or reference to either the right. team captain or the coach who, whose hobby is collecting stuff, scrap metal on beaches and... Uh, I'll um, give you one bonus point for that, yeah. It was all about the fascinating hobby of one of the players. Here's Paul Terry to explain. When I scored against Plymouth in the FA Cup, the reason behind the celebration was our striker Steve West is a metal detecting enthusiast, so we decided to take the mickey out of him as he gets a lot of stick off the lads, and that was the reason behind the celebration. Oh, look what I found. That's the only medal you'll win this year, mate. <laughs> Steve West spent his Saturday night's metal detecting, he's found Roman rings, ancient coins and a 4,000 year old spearhead. But strangely, he's never found a girlfriend. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have ten. to deprive our regulars of their right to sight as we play Field of Sportsmen. David and Jonathan, your first this week. Take your positions, please. David, I think you need to speak out because I don't think it's fair tonight. For a start, Nick's given three points, bonus points, just because he supports Stoke. 
And then, well, we clearly, clearly cheated. It was in the paper. Well, you the, are such a hairy, bald faced cheat. <laughs> You're like a cheat. It's like an orangutan <laughs> sitting there cheating in front of me, David Attenborough. You're you watching the FA Cup, uh, uh, Jonathan. I'm <laughs> near the cheating monkey now. <laughs> See, he has bribed someone for the answer. You Come on, blindfolds on. Obviously, David, don't I tuck just, your shirt in your look, jeans. I'm you look like a pensioner. I told you. You look like a pensioner. You do. You look like this, you're from a home. Hey, hey, hey. You look like you're, you look like you're being let out on a bloody outing. It's like, here we go. Look, mind the stairs. Come on, don't do the white room. Jonathan, it's only a matter of time before we have David on telly saying, "Want to release money from your pension?" <laughs> anyway, David Attenborough has never worn camouflage like that. <laughs> Tell you what, Come I on, go, my phone's on. Right, I go in an Indian restaurant. You'd never find me. Come on, my phone's on. <laughs> my phone's on, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan, can we have? That's enough. We get the odor. <laughs> can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, and your time starts now. Moving. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's sooty. <laughs> He's killing an animal or something. Is, he... is it Hans Blick? <laughs> is this where England went right in Australia? Because what you've got to do is you've got to get the grip right. You just tuck it under your arm and walk off, all right? That's it. <laughs> no, it's a bullshit meter. Danger, danger! <laughs> Come on, um, time's running out. I think it's, it's got to be Dagger. It's been it's set up by my pacemaker. Three points, well done. That was a lot of it. Dagger and boys, Gary and Rory, blindfolds on, take your positions. You have a similar amount of time to figure out who's at your fingertips. We've got the holes in there. It's great for me. I had all their bums lined up right in front of me. Did you? Woo! Is that what you look at first when you see a young fella? <laughs> I wish I had mine with me. <laughs> Big blamonge over there, that one. Mm. From the look of things, three cheeks. <laughs> and man breasts. <laughs> So, can we have our second mystery guest, please? OK, and your time starts now. Well, a great round of applause, so it's not Lee Bowyer, Ow. we know that. <laughs> Hang on, it's a bloke in a wetsuit. It's a bloke in a wetsuit holding a television aerial. <laughs> He's one Rod Holt should have got round that night. Oh, I'm supposed to know. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> hang on. My woman detector's gone off. <laughs> stay here. Out. <laughs> what is this? Where are you, Gary? It's a swing. That's typical. We're always getting a feel, and Gary thinks, no, it's a swing. <laughs> God. It's a woman on a oh, pole. Wow. <laughs> in rubber. It's my birthday. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, no. I know this. Is it? Is it? It's Tanya, isn't it? Is it Tanya? It's it's Tanya is indeed Tanya, Tanya Streeter. Well done. and Gary's team have 13. <laughs> we end it all by playing the name game. The team in the league goes first, which is um, Gary's team, actually, this time. OK, 90 seconds. And your time starts now. Oh! Uh, same name as me, a cricketer. 
McGrath. Glenn, Glenn McGrath. Very good indeed. Uh, where's the mask? Place of Fulham? Sava, Facunda Sava. Very good. This is a one day batsman. When you steal something, colloquially, you. Pinch. Nick it. Nick. Uh, Nick it's, no. not, it's not very good, yeah. Um, you know when you were feeling Tanya, you felt a bit. Bottom. Aroused. <laughs> no. <laughs> More sort of Sore. Horny. Sore. Horny. No, horny. Don't. Horny. <laughs> Randy. Yeah, yeah. and an uh, animal that goes. Quack, 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 quack. Duck. Yeah. Randy Duck. Very good indeed. <laughs> uh, Chelsea player, you play for Holland, same name as you and Churchill, actually. Winston Dirk. 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 Winston Bogart. Very good indeed. Uh, second name, what you've got inside, well, not, not what you've got inside your head, what most people have inside <laughs> their head. A brain. brain. Ana and it's first name, anagram of brain. Rainb. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Brian Bray, thank you very much. This is a Belgian tennis player and a girlfriend of Leighton Hewitt. Um, oh, uh... Second name sounds like that part of the church which has a vaulted, covered. You know, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not worth it, is it? Um, it rhymes with uh, Kim Cloisters. Oh, no, <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're very clever, you've got a big. What's it called? Brain. You're called. A rain. No, no. <laughs> if you're very brainy. brainy, but if you're Australian, you're you're not brainy. You're, you're brainy, mate. Briny, briny. Yeah, it's briny. a golfer. <laughs> Eleven. You win it Can I just say, Tanya, you look spectacular in that wetsuit. Thank you. You know, David's wearing a wetsuit. It wasn't wet earlier, but now. <laughs> And the time starts now. OK, first name, uh, this football team, The Orient, something Orient. Leighton. Second name, uh, he's a world, world tennis player. Second name is like... Oh, you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, OK. Uh, oh, this is a crazy German bloke. We saw him underwater early on. Uh, first name, it's the first part of his first name. It's like a fox, but it isn't a fox, it's a... Wolf. Second Wolf. name is... Wolf, you want to be in my... My gang. gang. Thank you. Okay. Shouldn't really sing that anymore, should you? And the... Uh, <laughs> Too low. There you yes. go, thank you. All well, right, uh, this is the Italian men's world freediving record holder. First name is Italian for Albert. Umberto. Second name... Yeah, well, don't wait. If you know, okay, jump on. in. Like bet you now, Michael. Bet now, Michael. Okay. <laughs> uh, You're this in. is a cricket town, Australian. Second name, it's a cheap champagne, I believe. There's no such thing, surely. Champagne. Bollinger. And... Bollinger, there you go. <laughs> and the first name would be. How many f cricketers are there called Bollinger? <laughs> There's, there's Remy who runs the firm, there's... Um, no cricketers! <laughs> I'm going to have you put back in that home and this time I won't come and visit. <laughs> and his I first name up. is the same as Mr Barder, who done lots of leg. OK. Why don't you All say right. the first place? This is a, is a shop owner who I believe owns Fulham as well. Oh, him. Can't get a passport. Oh, fired, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Second name is, is the, the feeling Tanya has for me right now. When women get in my presence, they feel this way about me. Sick. <laughs> See? Rattling around here somewhere, there's still a brain. <laughs> uh, right, first name is, uh, you would say if you were an American, you'd say Keanu Reeves, say, yeah, but seriously. <laughs> really barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. <laughs> right, oh. <laughs> You see, we could have won. We could have won as a team. <laughs> dude, love, seriously, dude. So, at the end of all that, David's team had 14, but this week's winner is Gary's team with 19. Thanks to Gary, Rory and Dominic, David, Jonathan and Tanya, we're all off to challenge Jonathan to see how long he can hold his breath. My name's Nick Hancock, I think it's all over. It is now. There's a rumpus brewing in the canteen. Victoria Wood's dinner ladies over on BBC Two in a moment. Here on BBC One, after the news, Paddy Keelty talks to comedian Rob Brydon and has music from Craig David. That's almost live at 10.35.